Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, we just made it through Labor Day. We got our last food plot of the year planted today and it's close. It's really close to deer season. I know there's some states that have started already. If you're fortunate enough to be hunting, please be careful and good luck. There's a lot of states that opening day for archery is right around the corner. I know in Wisconsin, right across the river from us, I think they're about 10 to 12 days away. Missouri's pretty close. So it's go time pretty quick here, folks. But one thing we want to talk about, we're seeing on social media, on, on some we're hearing from some customers and, and just people calling us and asking questions, uh, even though they're not using a Northwoods product, food plot failures. And it's, it's an unfortunate part of planting food plots. You know, things might not work the way we want them to. And so we wanted to talk about that tonight, what we're seeing and what we would recommend uh, to quick uh, fix that problem and uh, salvage your food plot for 2023. But one of the things I want to talk about first and foremost and just, you know, discuss this is that I understand human nature. Um, a, a lot of people, the very first thing they want to do is question the seed. Okay, and I'm not going to speak for any other seed company. I'm just going to speak for what we do here at Northwoods. Our seed, the lots, the batches that we work with, we get in uh, from our producer partners is not only independently uh, tested in labs, a lot of them do their own testing in house. Uh, some of the state agencies will come in and test that seed. And we do a lot of testing here. I will do germination tests, ragdoll tests. We did a video on how to do a germination test. And we do a lot of testing um, because I want people to understand that we try to get the best possible results the best seed we can get, the cleanest seed. We don't want the seed that you buy from Northwoods. You shouldn't have to worry about it, okay? I want that peace of mind is a big thing, okay? And I do, I understand uh, 2008, I bought some soybeans and had a great stand. In 2009, uh, bought the same soybean seed from the same company, had an absolute disaster of a planting, maybe five or 10% germination. Well, I called them up and I said, hey, what gives? Did we get some bad seed? And they said, well, no, actually, you can't plant soybeans in Upper Michigan when it's 45 degrees out. Lesson learned. Poor planting technique. Planting timing wasn't very good. So I just want people to understand that, that we go through a lot of extremes to make sure we have the best product we can sell. We stand behind everything that goes out the door here. Um, about eight or 10 days ago, we were contacted by a gentleman who was having issues with the brassica blend. As I'm on the phone with him, I'm grabbing a bag of brassica blend off the shelf, just randomly grabbed a bag, cut it open, did a germination test. Uh, within 48 hours, we had probably 90% of it throwing a root. After one week, probably 98, 99% had not only thrown a root, but starting to form a leaf. We'll show you a picture of that later on. But we had great uh, results on our germination test and those seeds were also tested in laboratories and in house by the companies that we bought them from. So we have great products. We have good germination and folks, I can, you know, nothing's perfect, but I can pretty much guarantee uh, when folks have problems, it's not the seed. But what we want to do is work through those problems and help those people because that might be something, we might see something new for the first time and then we can address that to where not only that person doesn't have that failure again, but the rest of our customers. It might be something new, something we might have to add to our planning instructions. We do have planning instructions on our website, northwoodswhitetails.com, as an aid to help people have the best chance of success with the products they purchase from us. So that being said, let's get into food plot play failures, okay? Now, we're, we're seeing, like I said, a lot of it on social media. We're talking to customers. Our partners are talking to customers. And a lot of what we're seeing is weather-related. And what I mean by that is the drought. Okay, I believe this is the third year in a row for a lot of people in the Midwest where <clears throat> July was really dry. August is extremely dry. Uh, I've got a gentleman down in Missouri. Uh, I believe their archery season starts in the next 10 days, and he still has his seed sitting in his barn, just can't plant because there's no rain in sight. Now I know we're starting to get a little bit of rain here in Upper Michigan about every eight to 10 days. Um, and I have great looking food plots except one, and I'll get into that in a minute. But the other end of the spectrum, uh, Lower Michigan, where a lot of our partners work and, and farm and, and plant food plots, 
they had a lot of rain, uh, mid to late July and early August to where a lot of food pots were flooded out. I, we had to send a bunch of brassica to some, to, to customers. They had sweet peas planted, great looking plots three, four weeks in and, and they got flooded out. So they're going to do a replant with the short season brassica. So they still have a brassica food plot. They're not going to have the tonnage, but it's a 45 day maturity brassica planting and they're going to still salvage their plot. But other end of the spectrum, it was flooded out compared to the drought that they had last year. So uh, mother nature is just not cooperating and, you know, taking in, you know, the extreme flooding or the extreme drought. We just can't have uh, the best of both worlds, but it's something we're going to have to deal with is weather related food plot failures. Planting technique. <clears throat> now I talked about the one food plot that's not doing very well for us and it's because of the rain. It's the food plot across the street. It looks like a pumpkin patch because it's all boulder sticking out. I don't dare take any tillage equipment back there and basically what it is it's a perpetual rye plot. We let the rye go all year and then about mid-August pending some rain We'll go in there, spray, and then seed the rye, and then I take a lawn roller in there, a steel lawn roller, and we flatten the rye, <clears throat> and that's our no-till plot. Now, it it's starting to germinate. It's just taking its sweet time. It's terrible clay soil. It needs a lot of rain to get it going. Now, it is. I, I checked uh, yesterday, and it is starting to throw a root. We're supposed to have rain tonight or tomorrow, and then um, I believe next week a couple of days of rain and we've built up a pretty good thatch layer with the rye but it's clay soil it's a little bit of a slope it just doesn't hold moisture very well so we need a bunch of rain to get that going <clears throat> and had i you know had that been the only food plot on that property um and it's it's tough you know we might be looking at some sort of a perennial but then you can't go in there and mow it because of all the rocks so it's it's a pretty tough situation we're going to actually shoot a video back there once that ride takes off, but we're going to take you back there and shoot a video. You know, we're using a lot of Plot Doctor products, but again, we definitely need some rain. So that's the one that's struggling, but all our other food plots, we're going to try to take you and show you all our food plots before season starts, show you what we did, why we did it, and the methods and the seed choices we use. But um, the, the one that's struggling is the no-till food plot. So we're going to get into planting techniques. You know, no-till, uh, it's pretty popular. Um, subject right now a lot of videos on it on youtube um and just people talking about it you know part of me thinks it's kind of a fad um you know it's it generates a lot of interest you know but we don't do you don't see a lot of videos from us uh, on no-till and i tried it um and i found david brandt uh, maybe seven eight years ago i think 2017 maybe i can't remember it was, it was a while ago and we tried to do that regenerative egg food plot and it was an abstract failure, okay? And I had it side by side with our three strip system food plot and it was, you know, nine out of 10 deer stayed in that three strip system. So I, you know, and I was putting it in with a grain drill and we had some equipment, okay? And the guys that you see that are doing successful no-till food plots with this regenerative egg style, they have equipment, no-till drills, nice tractors, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the average food plotter that's got a four-wheeler, uh, maybe some ATV equipment, uh, maybe a small tractor and some equipment. Man, I just I just don't know um, if that's the answer. I've just not found that yet. We're trying, you know, we've got a couple of food plots we're trying it on, um, but I'm just not seeing the results as far as, um, you know, the tonnage in October when we want it. I'm just not seeing that. So I really don't talk about it a lot. I'm again, you know, don't be offended. I'm not saying no-till isn't a way to go. Um, but I think for the average food plotter, you know, man, you got to get those seeds buried, in my opinion. And I've, I've seen, and the thing is, I get to talk to, man, hundreds of people every year. And the biggest, you know, you can take the weather out of it, but the biggest failure we're seeing right now is guys that are trying to do this throw and grow um, just and it, to quote them literally i throw the seed out there and, and hope for rain and a lot of it's the products like fall forage the big seeds green forage blend the big seeds and <clears throat> especially if it's on bare soil if you're throwing seed out on bare soil you're asking for a failure 
again, it looks cool. There's a lot of people making YouTube videos of it, but I'm very curious to see um, the behind the scenes stuff. What do those food plots really look like? Okay, I've not really seen food plots that look like ours. Um, just the comparison, I just not seen it. There's some green food plots, but again, I just, if you're spending all that time, money, you know, your deer season could hinge on if your food plot is a success or a complete failure, you know, you don't want to be spending the month of October trying to replant a food plot. And I'm just, you know, with the soils that I'm dealing with here in Upper Michigan, and I'm sure a lot of the country has some pretty poor soil conditions as well. Um, I'm just a huge proponent of burying the seed. Even if you're doing the buckwheat method on poor soil, I'll do a light disking just to get that seed covered. You know, people are freaking out. Oh my God, you're tilling. I'm not tilling. Okay, I'm just breaking up the surface to get that seed in the ground. And you know, we talk about seed size and I've mentioned this before and I'm going to keep talking about it. Okay, because I see it all the time. As big as that seed is, okay, that's how deep you want it buried. You know, brassicas, clovers, radishes, you can just run them into the ground. I really like a lawn roller. I think it's very consistent, more consistent than a call to packer, especially in a no-till situation. And we're going to get into that uh, one of our upcoming videos, no-till versus tilling. And we're going to talk about call to packers, and it's kind of an eye-opening um, for a lot of you folks. But I really like a lawn roller for doing these little tiny seeds, okay? It's very consistent a consistent pressure, a consistent depth. But if you think you're going to go into a bare ground, especially if it's clay, especially if it's sand, and you're just going to put those seeds out there and run them into the ground, if you don't have rain before you plant and right after you plant, and there's not a lot of soil moisture, you're asking for a failure. I know the old cliche of buckwheat and rye, it'll grow in the back of a pickup truck. Yes. I've got a gravel driveway out here and every once in a while I'll, sh I'll shove the forklift through a bag of seed, the forks, okay, and I've got rye all over the parking lot. And when we get a rain, it germinates, but guess what? Four days later, it's dead. It's gone. It, it can't sustain it, okay? I've got, you know, six inches of uh, crushed limestone and two feet of sand. It doesn't sustain it. Um, so I, I just don't think that's the best way to plant, especially if you're in crappy soil, okay? And our last food plot, I'd mentioned it before we planted today, fall forward sandy soil with some extra rye added in. And sprayed last week, ran one pass with a disc very lightly just to break the surface up, put some nitrogen down, put our seed down, lightly dissed, rolled it in, done. Got that seed covered. We're supposed to have rain tonight. We're supposed to have rain tomorrow. And if we get that rain, I can guarantee you within 10 days, there will be deer feeding in that food plot. Okay. And I'm not waiting two or three weeks for multiple rains, hoping that that stuff grows. I'm fully confident if we get rain tonight, if we get rain tomorrow, there will be deer eating by September 20th. And I've got 10 more days until October 1st. So just something to think about. Keep that in the back of your mind. If you have had failures, even if you've had one with the planting technique you're using, you might want to think about changing that technique. Okay. Soil type. And this is going to bounce off of technique. And I talked about sandy soil. I've talked about clay. And folks, there's probably some soils I've not even discussed. Out east, they've got that, you know, their reclamation, strip mining. Um, you know, down south, they've got some, that red clay, um, you know, but, but basically it's not the same, but it, you know, we kind of deal with it the same way. And, and I've told so many folks from, you know, Minnesota down to Florida, when they're talking about planting these bigger seeds, you know, especially if they've got a clean food plot, you know, bare soil, get that seed covered you're doing yourself an injustice if you just go out there, throw it out there and try to roll it in. It just, it might not work the way you want. Um, I was watching a video, this is actually an interesting point. I was watching a video the other day, a uh, new channel I like to watch, and he was talking about doing some no-tilling, seeding, overseeding. 
Okay, and, and he had a food plot growing and he was overseeding, I can't remember if it was rye or something. Maybe he was overseeding beans. But anyway, he what he looks for, and this actually makes really good sense, he looks for a rain, then he seeds, because there's moisture in the ground, then he seeds and he's looking for another rain. So you're, you're, you're looking for that window in between two rains. And that's a great scenario. But if you think about sand, and, and I, I, I lived this last year, if you think about sandy soil, okay, you can get rain at noon and then that sun pops out at one o'clock by evening that top 16th of an inch eighth of an inch is completely dried out it's quickly dried out and so if you have a, a rye or, or a seed sitting on top of there okay that's you're hoping that it's going to germinate throw a root you know in, in a couple of days now that little root's searching for moisture well if you get one rain to start the germination process and now you have eight to ten days of sun that root's got no moisture. Okay, same thing with clay. You get rain and it starts to crack that seed and it's got starting to throw a root. Well, you get two to three days of sun. Now that clay turns into concrete, that top eighth inch, really hard for that little root to penetrate. And I saw that back here with some peas that never got buried. We had two good rains, but five days later, those peas were dead. The root was black, it was, it was dead because it couldn't penetrate that clay. Had we buried the peas with the rest of the seed, it would have germinated just fine. So soil type, you know, you've got to think about that. Am I doing a disservice to these seed laying on top of the ground or even no tilling into a little bit of thatch? Um, you know, you could, you could put some thatch on top of sand, but you know what, unless it's really, really thick, it's still going to dry out if you get the prolonged heat after one rain. So kind of think about what, that situation, if your soil doesn't allow it, you might, again, go back to burying that seed. Now, conversely, if you're in a river bottom or you're in a bottom food plot, you know, really good soil, holds moisture, you might be able to get away with seeding it and rolling it in after you've done some spraying. That might work, okay? But for the most part, like if you're up on a ridge, you know, doesn't hold moisture very well, it's a slight slope, doesn't hold moisture very well, Man, if you can get those seeds buried, I think you're going to have much better luck. Something to think about. Uh, number four, fertilizer and lack of nutrients. Um, we see this a lot. Um, social media again, um, brassica. You're going to start to see it on the social media sites. What's wrong with my brassica? Purple, yellow, um, stunted, pale. Uh, I've seen pictures of our HD screen four feet tall in, in July or August, and it should be eight feet tall. It's pale. It's stunted. Um, just lack of nutrients. Okay. We've got on our website, northwoodswhitetails.com, we've got planning instructions with a generic fertilization recommendation. We highly recommend soil tests, and that'll get you really close. Okay. You might not need as much phosphorus as we're recommending. Again, we're openly admitting, we're kind of guessing, but this is a general recommendation without seeing a soil test. And again, I, I tell folks, do the soil test before you plant and, and we can get you real, really close, okay? But we had a gentleman, um, I think it was yesterday, you know, messaging me. He had, uh, I think it was a fall forge um, with the radishes combo. And they planted, I think, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Got some really heavy rain right after, um, but got good germination. Plot looked really nice. But when he sent me this picture, I looked at it, and I thought maybe something was wrong with the camera on the phone. It was yellow, and I thought, man, it was shocking to see that color. But I thought, well, if this is really the color, I, I knew right away what the problem was. And I asked him, what you, the first thing I asked him, what did you fertilize with and at planting? And he said, nothing. And he said, I didn't think I needed to. And so we kind of worked out a plan on, all right, I need you to do this, this, and, and you know, maybe some foiler if it's not going to rain, um, liquid fertilizer, and mentioned some products that I thought might help him. Um, but I, you know, I'm not sure where this is coming from, where people think they don't need to fertilize their food plots. I mean, like I said before, there's you, you a lot of time in seed fuel um, your time is worth something. And a lot of these food plots are going to dictate success or failure 
for your deer season in 2023. Why would you skimp on fertilizer? Maybe this gentleman was not knowing he needed it, you know, being, he might've been new. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I do know there's some YouTube videos where some stars are saying, yeah, you don't need to fertilize it or just drop a little of this on there, this liquid and, you, and you're fine. And <clears throat> uh, some situations, you know, if you're farming in the greatest dirt in the world in the Mississippi River Valley, yeah, you might be able to get away with that. You know, you got topsoil this thick and it's great. But, you know, if I tried to do that here where, I, where we're food plotting anywhere here with uh, the sandy soils and the clay, uh, I'd get probably brassicas about that tall and stunted and, um, you know, cereal rye that would be pale in color and just didn't taste good to the deer. Okay, there's a lot of people, a lot of places in this country, you do have to do some sort of fertilization. Ask your local farmer, you know, does he go throw a little, you know, something out of the white jug on there or does he actually do inputs? Okay, he's making a living off these cash crops and so he's going to fertilize them as needed. Our cash crops as hunters and food plot um, um, managers and installers are right now, our fall food plots are our cash crops. Our spring food plots may or may not be the cash crop, but the cash crop, this is where the bread and butter is made right now. Okay, we need the most food, the most attractive food, healthy food for these deer, and whether it's, um, you know, granular fertilizer or liquid fertilizer like Plot Doctor and Brad Harper has, most food plots are going to need that. Even rye, uh, the rye I planted today, the rye in the oats, gave it a shot of nitrogen. I went to Menards and got some 3003 lawn fertilizer, couldn't get some urea locally, so I grabbed a slow release 3003 and it's gonna work just fine. So think about that. We don't want you to have a beautiful looking food plot now especially brassica, you get to October and it's yellow, it's purple, it's stunted. Um, you know, we've got fertilization recommendations for brassica for the granular and we're working uh, hand in hand with Brad Harper at Harper Growing Solutions to come up next year with hopefully something where we can knock that granular back and start to develop a, a planting uh, fertilization recipe with his liquid products. So we're actually using some now. Uh, and and uh, so far, I really like the results. A lot of our partners in Michigan are using them, partners in Illinois are using them, and they really like the results to where someday we might not need granular fertilizer. But that being said, if you're planting food plots, make sure you're using some sort of an input because folks, most of us, again, don't live in the Mississippi River Valley, those big buck states where you really don't need fertilizer allegedly. You know, I know here in Michigan, I need a lot of it because we've got terrible soils. So just again, something to think about. If you're having a food plot failure, your food plot looks like crap. It just doesn't look right. You know, you can reach out to us, reach out to Brad Harper, Harper Growing Solutions. We've got some great partners as well. We can bounce ideas off of, but we don't want to find out October 30th, October 20th, that you didn't fertilize and now the food plot just looks like garbage or the deer aren't eating it. All right, so those are a lot of the failures, okay? How do we fix it? What's a quick fix? How do I salvage my food plot for 2023? Seasons anywhere from 10 days away to maybe a month away. What are we gonna do? We talked about our, our friends and customers down in uh, central Michigan, uh, lower Michigan that were flooded out. Their Sweet Feast Brassica was flooded out. We've got a product that was, <laughs> Ironically, it was designed for the drought that we were uh, suffering for the last couple years and they were holding off, holding off planting. Finally, we started getting some rains in September the last couple years. Now they can plant brassica and still have uh, some results. So most of them, you know, they, and what I told them, I said, okay, just go and seed right into that dying brassica with this seed. You might have to add a little bit of nitrogen because it probably leached out of the ground roll it in and you're fine. And that's what we did that way. But if we're looking for some quick green products, something that grows fast, something that's gonna be palatable for the deer, we don't have time to wait for brassica because you know we, we don't wanna be planting October 15th or, or something like that. What I found the four fastest growing products or plant types, and this will work for most of the whitetails, even all the way down south. 
the four products that I found are cereal rye, oats, buckwheat as a candy crop, but a great early season forage, and annual clovers. Now I'm not talking about like our clover blender, our clover blend plus chicory or seclusion. I'm talking about annual clovers. Crimson clover. We're playing around with and trying a lot of like a Bersim, a Blanza. We're trying those out, seeing which ones produce the most, the quickest. We're playing with those uh, in our food plots, seeing what we, uh, we like and, and something that I think we can try to offer maybe next year. The one that I found that produces the absolute quickest to where we planted it and I had deer eating on it is oats. And right now, all our food plots right now that have oats in it, they are just being destroyed, okay? And we did, uh, again, if you can watch back that video, gosh, I think it was about a month ago, we did the three strip planting and we did the, the, the strip closest to the food plot screen was our fall forage, which has got a lot of oats in it. And we planted, I believe it was on a Sunday, and the following Monday night, we had a little buck out there nosing around, and I could see that he was actually nibbling here and there, and then the food plot was just starting to green. It was about that tall. I went out there the next morning, and he had clipped off some oats here and there. So he, it was starting. And so I really like oats as a quick fix. Now, if you've got frost coming right away, Obviously, you're going to have to add cereal rye to that. But cereal rye is another fast grower. Now, I don't see the attraction as fast as oats with cereal rye. It might be a couple of weeks. It might be, I don't know, 14 days, depending if you get rain right away. Cereal rye pops out. The cereal rye that we've seen pops out and almost has a purple to a violet tint to it. Then it eventually turns green, and then they start to get on it. It's about a 14-day to maybe 20-day time frame from germination to when the deer start utilizing it. Buckwheat instantly comes up with moisture if the seed's buried, okay? Or you get a lot of moisture if it's sitting on top of the ground. But it's got leaves, uh, you'll see usage within maybe 21 to 28 days. Uh, the leaves will be big enough. Uh, we've got some buckwheat and food plots that are, I think, five weeks old and they're about that big. Nice big healthy leaves on them, but the four week old buckwheat, three week old buckwheat are, is big enough. I found that the deer will start eating it and they love that, they love that young tender buckwheat. And I talked about annual clovers as well. Okay, uh, again, crimson clover, blonza clover, brassim clover, the same brassim that we use as a spring planting. It grows tall, it produces a clover head that within, gosh, uh, we took a picture of a three week old planting. It's, um, uh, what is it again, September 5th, I think. And I believe October 1st, when our archery season starts, there'll be plenty of food produced by this clover, this annual clover. So these are our four go-tos. Again, if you've got time to replant brassicas, uh, if you're down south or even, even in Illinois right now, uh, southern Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, all the way to Tennessee, North Carolina. If you got to do a brassica replant or you're waiting for the drought to go away and rains to come back, that short season Southern States brassica blend we have produces some good tonnage. It's not the same as the Sweet Feast, but it will produce a very uh, quality brassica food plot. I, <laughs> I'm sounding like a broken record. <laughs> Bury the big seed. Okay, we talked about it before. So we're going to take you to all of our food plots this year that we put in. Um, I got to do that quickly because usually um, early September, I, I, we're done going near any of our food plots. But we've got one food plot. Um, we dug a water hole and it's pure sand. The whole thing's lined with pure beach sand. And we planted a combination of rye oats and I believe one of these annual clovers or I can't remember, maybe we put the seclusion mix in there. I'd have to check my notes. But anyway, the rye is beautiful. We got one, uh, one rain and it germinated. It was lightly dissed in with our uh, little ATV disc, followed up with a lawn roller. And then we went over it with, um, I think it was seclusion 360, dropped that down and then we rolled it in again. Um, and it did great. It looks awesome, beautiful. But the rye that didn't get buried, somehow we missed a little bit of it, still sitting on, the, on, on top of that uh, three weeks later, maybe two or three rains, it's not done anything. 
So had I just gone in there, threw the seed down on top of the ground, odds are we wouldn't have this beautiful green food plot we're going to show you. Same thing with uh, last year on the same, it was about 200 yards away. I'm out in a drizzle. It's raining. I got a rain jacket on and I'm overseeding rye in some spots that didn't take as well as I was hoping. All right, maybe I didn't seed them thick enough. Well, anyway, I'm out in the rain seeding rye in a sandy area. That's got rye, you know, it's growing already. Now the rain stops the next day and then we get about 10 days without any rain. That sand dried right up. None of that rye germinated. It might've been a 5%. As I'm seeding in rain, it dried up and it just never, it never thickened. That food plot never thickened up. And I just went down there one day and there's just rye everywhere. Well, it threw roots, but that, you know, we talked before about how sand gets really dry really quick. That's what happened. So bury that big seed if you can, okay? Because one rain, and I've got some terrible soil here, but if I can get it buried, one rain and it's rolling. I'll see it. You know, again, I've talked about uh, the food plot we did today. I'll see that probably September 15th to 18th. I'll see deer on that food plot eating. All right. Now, number three, the plot doctor, uh, Harper Growing Solutions. If you've got food plot failures or they look really, really bad, it's going to be a nutrient issue. Okay. And it's tough to take a soil test now after if you did any, it did any kind of inputs like lime, uh, you know, triple 19 or stuff like that, because you're going to, you might get a false reading, but I have one spot in our brassica plot. It's just a little tiny spot. And, and I took some pictures. I sent them to Brad. I said, Hey, what do you think about this? And he said, okay, we want to do this, 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 and this. All right. And, uh, we're going to fix it. Uh, I believe tomorrow we've got some liquid we're going to put on there. And, if you can't get a hold of Brad, I know he's, gosh, I think he said it was like about a month ago, he was about 700 emails, text messages uh, behind trying to catch up and it sounds like he caught up. Uh, you may be able to get a hold of him, maybe not. Um, but the fastest, without rain, the fastest way to feed those plants is a liquid fertilizer, like the Plot Doctor, the Plot Doctor Nitrogen, the Plot Doctor Calcium. Okay, that's the fastest way to fix this if you don't have rain. I mean, you can do some uh, granular inputs, but it needs a bunch of rain um, to get that process going. You know, uh, the biggest thing you see on social media, throw your at it, throw your at it. Well, okay, well, if you're sitting in a drought or it's not raining, that urea is not gonna do anything, but the plot doctor will. Now, if you can't get a hold of Brad or you, you can't get plot doctor, um, you might try something like a miracle Grow, okay? That garden fertilizer, but you're gonna have to buy a bunch of it. Now, I was just at Menards the other day and they had a big box of it for like, um, it was 20 bucks. And I think it was like a 20, 20, 10 or 20, 20, 20. They've got 20, 10, 10. That will help as well. But a liquid might be faster results than a granular, okay? Something to think about that if you've got poor looking food plots, just throwing your E at it might not be the answer. You might need a liquid and that's going to help immensely. And you might need some calcium. That's going to help immensely. So I hope this helps. Um, you know, we hate to see failures. Um, we've kind of got one going on right now. I don't want to call it a failure, but season starts in now oh, what three and a half weeks and i'm not seeing any green on this thing yet and a little bit nervous but we're just waiting on rain so if you've got some questions if you've got some failures if you want to talk about a situation uh, we can help you i'm sure a lot of the people watching can chime in because you know i'm sure everybody that's watching this we've we've all seen uh, just about every failure known to man. So hopefully somebody, if it's not myself, somebody can chime in uh, and, and offer a suggestion. But again, if you've got failures, you've got questions, ask them in the comments below. Uh, we can probably get Brad or some of our partners on to, to answer some of these questions. But we definitely want to uh, 
help you out. We don't want you to go into the 2023 food, uh, deer season with a failed food plot. So there's plenty of time to get it turned around. Um, you know, we just might have to change whether it's your planting strategy, uh, your fertilization, uh, uh, your fertilization that you're using. We might have to change that from a, um, a granular based fertilization to a liquid fertilization. We might have to look at that. We might have to change up what you're planting. Okay, we need something green. We need something green quickly. We might have to change that up. So we've got plenty of products on the shelf here at Northwoods to help you uh, overcome that food plot failure. If you need something, by all means, reach out to us, whether it's here uh, in the comments or text, email, Facebook Messenger. We'll try to get that help uh, out to you right away. We don't want to see any failures because deer season's right on the corner. So thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you in a few days.